Welcome back. Uh, so I'm joined today by Jura Hanley. Uh, and so I'll tell you, I just have to meet in Jura Hanley myself today, but I came across him there a number of years ago when I was reading an article about a man called the Holy Goalie. So do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about that, Jer? Uh How you are the Holy Goalie, what it's like living as a young Catholic man in Ireland and what that kind of, what role that plays in, in sports and in your life in general? Sure, yeah. Um, well, I grew up with a passion for football and um, for playing soccer. I was a goalkeeper and um, that was my dream. I uh, used to watch Man United. I want to be a professional. I wanted to play for Ireland. That's that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, I suppose that dream kind of came alive when I was 15. I started playing for Ireland. I, I played in all, in all the underage age groups for Ireland. Great from stuff. the time I was under 15, under 19 and had some trials in England. And so it wasn't like an unrealistic dream to be a professional football. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, in my early teens, I had an encounter with God on a retreat in Knock that sort of just opened up my my mind and my eyes and everything to the to the world of faith and to the reality of God. So that kind of started to put things in perspective for me. And um, I suppose my life was on a sort of a, a how would you say it? there was the two main things in my life as a mm -hmm. teenager then became faith and football. Yeah, yeah. And for a long time, I was sort of wanted to use my faith. To kind of uh, advance my football you know? yeah yeah so i'd be like asking god to bless my career you know or asking yeah. god for like just praying and praying a lot to ask and like my my dream was to be a professional footballer and i wanted god to bless that you know absolutely yeah um so but um i suppose within the 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 dressing room and stuff like that and just around the guys i remember being quite uh, fearful or anxious or sort of insecure really around and uh, just being a catholic or being a man of faith in the dressing room i used to be afraid yeah. that people would think about me and stuff and then i remember one one man saying to me once that you know the key to courage is being filled with the holy spirit the key to courage is being filled with the holy spirit that's a great one yeah and and that's so it's not our strength you know it's not like depending yeah. on our strength so i used to, i started to pray daily to be filled with the holy spirit and the more i did that the more i just asked to be filled with the holy spirit the more I felt I could just be myself around the lads and I started to kind of care less about what they may, might have thought about me, about my faith, um, about the way I was living. Um, and actually what actually started to happen was I found that I, the more I was myself, mm -hmm. the more I was able to get on with them and actually the more I felt like they actually started to respect me as well because I was just sincere, I was myself. Absolutely, I just yeah. wanted to be authentic. It wasn't that I wanted to go around, you know, telling everybody that they should be Christian or Catholic or it wasn't it wasn't that uh, in the dress room it was just I wanted to be able to be myself yeah it wasn't a, it wasn't a forceful way like it was yeah. more it was uh, a witnessing and inviting yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, I know sure I, I feel the same way myself obviously uh, being a young man in Ireland as you said uh, it's not always it's not always expected you're gonna be living your face but it is as you said it's having that that courage or that fortitude mm -hmm. in going out and living your face uh, one of the prayers I like to say myself every day is if I'm feeling fear in a situation or if you know there's something there's something facing me where I know I'm going to speak up for my Catholic faith or speak up for speak up for the, the dignity of life then uh, the prayer I like is just a phrase from the from the gospel or sorry a phrase from the bible and it's I can do all things through Christ who strengthen at me and so you know it's really it's that Christ working through us the Holy Spirit working through us means that we can do anything when when God is is, is working in our lives exactly, yeah. it's not about us it's about um, him working us and with us yeah yeah, yeah exactly uh, and so obviously then I didn't realize just how, how well you did in your soccer career. So that was great that uh, 15s, 19s you were playing for Ireland. So, I mean, that's that's obviously a, a boy's dream growing up, you know. Uh, and I really like what you're saying there as well, that, uh, that even as important as that was to you, you know, your, your face superseded that because uh, because you realize that, that true happiness, I suppose, is to be found in God himself, uh, even more so than football. Uh, but tell me a little bit about the discipline that you need in a football to get to that level and then how that uh, that plays a factor in your own face then. Yeah, I mean, I was always very disciplined. I mean, my parents were good at teaching us discipline in different ways and just eating food, right, right foods and stuff like that. But then when it came to the sport, it was like, I was just so determined to, to, to be the best goalkeeper I could possibly be mm -hmm. that I was giving it everything. And I was like, in terms of the way I used to, the amount of sleep I'd get, what I would eat, I used to like be aware of how much how many calories how much protein i was eating how often i had to mm -hmm. eat everything was sort of regimented when i go to the gym all gym programs are sort of are really um regimented and yeah. very, and so you have to be disciplined and i had to be very disciplined um and and 
you know, I think definitely when it came to then transferring, if you like, though, that discipline into my faith, the, the number one way that it has helped has been with regards to prayer. Mm-hmm. Because, like, for prayer, it has to be a discipline. Like, we have to make the decision to pray. We're not always going to feel like praying. Yeah. We're not always going to w- wake up in the morning and be like, yes, I just want to spend these first half, this first half hour, this first hour of my day with, with the Lord in prayer. You know, Absolutely, it's, yeah. Um, but... Um, but we have to be disciplined in our faith mm-hmm. because um, so yeah I mean th- that's been very very helpful for me. yeah uh, well I suppose the way I like to think about it is as you're saying going to the gym and strengthening your muscles you know it takes discipline you have to do it every day and it's the same with our spirituality our faith in God uh, I mean if you only exercise it once every so often it's like going to the gym once every couple of months I mean you know it'll be it'll be good for that day but yeah. I mean it's not gonna make a massive difference in your life uh, so it's it's about getting that habit and I know you talked before about just even if it starts with a few minutes a day I know that when I was drifting away from from living a Catholic life myself that that one thing I started doing uh, even throughout my my late teens I think it was and through my 20s was I kept saying that decade of a, a rosary a day and so even when I was kind of going wayward in my life then I really feel that 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 always kept me on track because God was always was always there even if I wasn't always living as I should have been then you know I was coming back to that that relationship in God uh, and it just keeps you keeps you on track you know and it pulls you back into it yeah I think that one of the things that's helpful in our faith as well is that we talk about virtue you know Mm -hmm. as Catholics and virtue basically there's just two parts to it there's our efforts and then there's God's grace Mm -hmm. and so it's not either or it's not like all on us to do everything yeah Um, it's 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 about yeah we have to make a certain effort then we have to ask God for help. And in that yeah. way, we actually become weak. It's like what you said earlier about, you know, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. And so to be able to be weak before God and say, Lord, I need your help. I think that's actually quite a manly thing when I've done a lot of retreats. I've often said that to young men. I've said, like, it's, it's, it's okay and it's good to ask for help, not just yeah. from the people around you, but from God as well. I think we grow up in a culture where we think, we have to, like to be strong means to be kind of independent not need anybody else have everything sorted around us you know yeah um but like I, and i'm meeting more and more people i've met someone recently who's um you know ex-professional footballer and he's learned to ask for help and he's and he's so grateful that he has learned that you know and he's had to ask for help and it's yeah. just i think um yeah it's it's but so so to be able to be disciplined on the one hand but to be able to ask for help on the other and to have both of those going i think that is a good recipe for being the man that God has created us to be. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Uh, and just getting on to prayer life, I talked, I know there, I said, Jer, about uh, seeing a decade a day, even during my teenage years, in my 20s. Obviously, that's developed a lot now for me. I, I get into the church every day. I pray before the tabernacle, being before Jesus in the Eucharist is, is vital, you know, to know that we're really there in the presence of God. Uh, I try, I'm trying to get into Mass every day. Obviously, things are, are different at the moment now with, with the lockdown that we're still, we're still enduring. Uh, in different ways but what are the ways that that you would say what exactly what are the prayer techniques or what is the prayer habit or how do you actually have that conversation with god every day in your life well i, I think the first thing to start with is is actually in a, is actually time mm-hmm. i think that if if you just have in your day your daily routine a certain amount of time with god mm-hmm. that is actually the, the f- that's the first step it's like i'm like i'm married right and i've learned through marriage how important time is in a relationship yeah like i know that katie values when i spend time with her and and i know that i love when katie spends time i love when we spend time together and i've learned that through our human relationship but it's the same with god he loves when we spend time with him and and that's the only way our relationship is going to grow with him you're only recently married jerry yeah well we're married yeah we're married two and a half years now so yeah sounds like things are going well anyway so far yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're still so, enjoying spending time together absolutely yeah no we, we and to be honest with you the, the the more the longer we're married the more we're enjoying time together and that's very you know, positive to hear yeah and it is and it's it's to be honest with you i think that it's god's um blessing it's like when i was a teenager i started to learn about god's plan for relationships now if, if most teenagers in ireland today if they heard if they said well i want to follow god's way with regards to the relationships mm-hmm. it's kind of like that's crazy that's old-fashioned it's but like i it, it like to say it works would be an understatement in the sense mm-hmm. that like I have a, I'm very sincerely, sincerely, like it's not, I'm not making it up or I'm sincerely happily married um, to a wonderful woman who I'm so grateful to have in my life. Yeah. And it's because as a teenager, I started saying yes 
to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Katie started saying yes to God's plan as well. Yeah. And 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 we pray together every night. We pray together. Yeah. And and I'm just so grateful that God has shown me His way because it's it's resulted in so much more happiness than I think. Now I, I don't know what life where my life would be if I didn't have God there. I just don't know, and sometimes I don't want to even think about it. I know. Yeah. But like, I I'm I'm so grateful to what God has shown me in terms of how to live as a man in, in Ireland today. Yeah, uh, and I think that's a great point. And clearly, your yourself and your wife are very blessed. Uh, but that the fact that you pray together, I bet, is is really is really strengthening in your relationship. Uh, I know I heard a phrase before. It said that it takes three to take to make a marriage. Yourself, uh, your husband or wife, and God. You know that if you put God at the center, you're putting an unfailing uh, an unfailing foundation at the center of your life. Uh, and I know to myself, I'm blessed with uh, with a wonderful girl for myself, uh, and we always pray together as well. And I mean, that's something that, uh, that's, that's rock solid in our relationship then, like, you know, because you can know that God will never let you down. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's that's great to hear. And it's very positive to hear about. Yeah. And, yeah, and just to say as well, like, it, it doesn't mean that it, I think that when we talk about like God's blessings in our lives, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be hardship. Yeah. It doesn't mean there's not going to be difficulties. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we're like living on cloud nine and everything's yeah. kind of rosy and perfect. But what it does mean is that we've got hope. We've got um, and we've got more peace and joy in our lives than I feel like we would if otherwise. You know? so yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great point because sometimes you know when, when yeah. we talk about our faith and we say that it's great uh, yeah. living our faith in the world, uh, I'd say it's the opposite of that. It gets easier, but that uh, but that the challenges that you face when you're facing them with God and it brings that great joy and great peace in your heart. Uh, because I mean, I was talking in a previous video uh, about a man in, in Russia in the, the gulag, the concentration camps during the communist regime called Solzhenitsyn. And he had great peace in his heart, even though he was locked up in those terrible camps because he had his faith in God. Uh, and you know, you hear these, these stories of people going through terrible tragedies in their lives. But when they have that faith in God, then that's something nothing can ever take away from them. And so, as you're saying, you know, as you obviously face challenges as a young man in, the, in, this, in this world, and same as myself and same as many young Catholics living out their faith publicly in our world. Uh, but that it's, it's actually those challenges that actually uh, help us to increase our faith and actually ultimately give us that, that peace and that joy. Uh, I suppose that's actually what I wanted to speak about you next with Derger, just living out uh, life as a young Catholic in the world today uh what's the advice that you would give to young men or what what would you talk about in your own life as being as being key to to living uh to living a good catholic life to living a life for god and for christ but i think that like sometimes we admit it really openly and other times we don't but i think the reality is that everybody looks for a role model in some way shape or form so like yeah. we're looking around us like for i mean people do this all the time like they might be looking on instagram for who to follow you know? yeah so who am i going to dress like who am i going to you know uh live like who you know who am i going to talk like whatever it's like um who, like say as a young man for me it was like i'd be looking at all these footballers like mm -hmm. i want to be like them that's who i want to be like and then when my faith came alive it's like this whole other world of role models was opened up to me yeah but like really good manly role models mm -hmm. i mean it begins with with christ himself who is the ultimate man yeah like there is no one more manly than jesus christ mm -hmm. i mean if you, if you just even i think it was jürgen klopp actually the liverpool manager he, yeah. he said the same thing recently he was interviewed and he said like who's your i think he said who the interviewer said who's your greatest role model and he said without a shadow of without jesus christ yeah and if you just read the gospels and you look at the way that he was able to stand up to people if you look at the way that he was not afraid mm -hmm. if you look at the way he was able to lay down his life for others yeah i mean he's the ultimate role model for men his life was not about himself his life was about doing the will of god mm -hmm. his life was about service to others yeah and i think that's probably one of the biggest things one of the biggest the blessings if you like uh, in our catholic faith we're called to live life for others not it's not all about ourselves it's not yeah. about like amassing all these material things for myself mm -hmm. or amassing all this form fame so everyone can see me or whatever but to actually live a life of service and i'm not i'm not saying that i'm doing that perfectly by any stretch of the imagination but it's far more fulfilling i think and um, to live a life about others than it is about yourself and and then after I for christ himself we've got like two thousand years worth of men who have laid down their life for christ and his church and for his and for god's people like we've got the role you you mentioned what was his name alexander Sol Solzhenitsyn, Solzhenitsyn. yeah yeah and look at maximilian colby i mean yeah. look at like i was in his cell um last year in in um what's the camp called again that i was in what's it called i'm not sure Auschwitz, Auschwitz, yeah, yeah, yeah. Auschwitz, yeah. yeah i was there last year and 
I mean, like this guy laid down his life mm -hmm. to save another man. He, he stepped out of line. He said, I'll take his place. Yeah. That's what being a man is. And, yeah. it's, and it's Christian men, it's saints in the Catholic Church who follow the example of Jesus Christ, who I think are the ultimate role models. And I think that if Ireland had more saintly men, mm -hmm. um, I think we'd be, we'd, we'd be a far happier place. Yeah. In so I, many in so many ways, you know. Yeah, I agree absolutely. Uh, it's and it's finding those good role models, as you say. I think is is vital in our life because we're formed by whoever our heroes are. Like you said there, and I thought that was actually a good comment mm -hmm. by what you said there about following people on Instagram. Because you know, even the word follow, like I don't even know if people realize. You know, I'm following this person. This is the person that I'm setting up as my role model. Yeah, yeah. And so whoever you're following on Instagram, yeah. do you want to be like that person? Yeah. Uh, because you want to think, you know, long and hard about that. Yeah. I, I know I was talking to you earlier about uh, how my own faith has developed and how it's been the, it's been what I surround myself with that has changed my faith and changed my way of seeing the world. So what I'm reading, what I'm listening to, what I'm watching on TV, uh, they've had massive influences. I talked in the, in the previous, uh, in the previous talks there with Ruth about how uh, Blessed Fulton Sheen has had a massive impact on me. There's a priest in America called Father Mike Schmitz, mm -hmm. massive impact on me. Some great uh, speakers in Ireland turning off the, the mainstream media and getting some, some good Catholic speakers explaining what's going on in our world, uh, speaking up about the, the value of life, the, the goodness of God, the, the role model of Christ, mm -hmm. as you said. Uh, it was only recently I listened to a talk about how how Christ is at the center of our culture and how proud we should be of that as Catholics. You know, the, the Western world has, has the Catholic faith and Christ at the center of it. And look at what has happened in the Western world over 2000 years. So many, so many great things. Now, I know there are some bad things as well, but I mean, you have to look at the, the fantastic achievements of, of the Christian West and know that that's because it's based on Christ. Uh, and it's really, really a great, a great learning. So I think, as you said, picking those role models uh, the great saints the likes of maximilian colbe you know they give us great yeah, great hope in our catholic faith yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly so well I hopefully we can do this again sometime again Jared. thanks okay. very much for coming thanks down uh, and thanks boys and girls for listening and god bless